Welcome to this second part dedicated to simulating the Intel 4004 CPU. As mentioned in the previous uh, video in this series, the Intel 4004 was the first microprocessor and it had quite a unique architecture. If you didn't watch the first movie, then uh, please stop and watch that movie and then return here okay so assuming you have an understanding of what uh, the intel 4004 is and uh, what's the architecture uh, now we're going to look on how to implement the simulation of this cpu but uh, what i will mention here is uh, something generic that can be applied to other CPUs as well. So the first step when you want to implement a simulation is to look at the data sheet and manuals. So uh, this is the Intel 4004 data sheet. Uh, I have it already downloaded. It's PDF. Uh, first, uh, there are some uh, generic uh, information. Uh, then you see the architecture, the pinout, the instruction format. I covered this in the previous video. And finally, you see the 4004 instruction set. I will uh, zoom it. So uh, basically uh, what needs to be implemented in the simulation is uh, to decode and process uh, each instruction. Of course the simplest instruction is this nope or no operation. This is encoded as 8 uh, zero bits so zero 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 uh, or in uh, decimal zero or in hexadecimal zero x zero zero and this is a no operation the CPU does nothing uh, then uh, there are uh, more complex instructions uh, there are arithmetic operations like add, subtraction, uh, and so on. Uh, operations that uh, work on uh, the flags or on the accumulator. Uh, and uh, operations that work with uh, memory chips, uh, read-only memory uh, or RAM. Okay, uh, so the first point is, uh, the first thing that you need to do is uh, read through the data sheet, uh, try to understand uh, these instructions. Uh, some of them are quite easy to understand. Uh, for example, clear carry will uh, set the carry flag uh, to zero, uh, or this uh, yuck instruction, uh, increment accumulator, will obviously increment the accumulator. This means we'll add one to the content of the accumulator and so on. However, some of the instructions, uh, maybe you will not understand them uh, easily, especially if you are not uh, experienced with assembly programming. So in this case, uh, you should try to find the manual and uh, try to look at it. Uh, in this case I have the MCS4 uh, microcomputer set users manual. There are other manuals as well uh, including uh, programming manuals and so on. Uh, also one thing to notice in this manual is a schematic. Uh, this is um, uh, proposed uh, schematic for an MCS4 system that uh, integrates uh, 
4004 CPU, uh, ROM chips 4001, and uh, RAM chips uh, 4002. Uh, to this uh, system, uh, there may be also uh, programmable read only memory chips and some other uh, supporting ICs. Uh, however, uh, we are uh, going to implement uh, something in the sense of this diagram. Again, as I mentioned in the previous video, uh, these uh, chips, uh, 4001 and 4002, uh, will actually recognize uh, the instructions being read by the CPU and will uh, execute uh, instructions related to IO ports. Uh, the chips actually have IO ports and uh, will also execute uh, instructions related to uh, reading and writing from uh, memory or from status registers. The 4002 RAM chips uh, have, uh, let's say, regular memory and uh, also status uh, registers. Again, uh, you can find the data sheet uh, for the 4001, for example. Uh, this is a ROM chip. Again, you can see the pinout and uh, the instructions that are actually recognized and executed uh, by this particular chip. Uh, for example, uh, SRC instruction which uh, sends uh, an address and uh, read uh, from a port, write to a port. Uh, you can also look at the uh, timing considerations and so on. Some of this information may not be relevant for the simulation, for example, electrical values. This is definitely not relevant for simulating the uh, chips. Uh, also, the timing uh, may be less relevant. Uh, again, as I discussed in the previous video, uh, we are going to focus on uh, simulating a system and not uh, individual uh, chips. So, uh, from this point of view, uh, we are not interested in sending uh, the address for bits at a time. Instead, uh, uh, there will be uh, the entire address and uh, the operation read write. So, this is less relevant. Uh, the most important part is um, the internal structure of the chip, which is uh, described uh, on this uh, first page and uh, the instructions uh, where uh, is involved both the CPU and uh, the ROM chip. Similarly for the RAM chip uh, we need to understand uh, the structure and uh, the instructions uh, that are uh, executed uh, by this uh, chip. But again, uh, we are going to focus on uh, system simulation and uh, these ins instructions will not be uh, implemented uh, separately in uh, different uh, chips. Okay, uh, so in the Java system simulator project, I already have the Intel 4004 uh, simulated. Again, in a previous video, I described the generic interfaces associated with simulating uh, CPU. I will not go into details, but um, the CPU uh, actually needs a step function. This is similar to what happens uh, during the clock cycle. However, uh, for the 4004, uh, this will uh, be several clock cycles that will take care of executing one instruction. And uh, we also have a number of uh, buses that are attached to the CPU. Again, this is different from the actual hardware, 
where you have uh, a single bus, which is a 4-bit bus, uh, that is used for both uh, addresses, memory access, and uh, I.O. access. However, uh, for simulation purposes, uh, I've separated this into a memory bus, an I.O. bus, and a control bus, uh, which contains uh, the uh, control signals for the CPU. Uh, again, in order to handle everything in a single simulation, I have uh, combined the various uh, pins to form a unique address. So, uh, the CPU itself uses a 12-bit address. It also uses um, the RAM bank select and the ROM uh, enable uh, to differentiate between uh, ROM and uh, the different RAM uh, banks. banks. Uh, again, this can be uh, combined uh, and added uh, to the 12-bit address and we get a 16-bit address. Uh, again, to differentiate between uh, regular memory access and uh, uh, I.O. access, uh, we need uh, some more bits added to the address. In my case, I got a total of uh, 20 bits. Uh, of course, this can be uh, better packed, uh, resulting in less bits being used, but uh, I was happy with uh, this one. Uh, I've included here uh, an example uh, encoding. Uh, so what is the ROM bank 0, ROM bank 1, um, RAM bank 0, RAM bank 1, and so on, uh, the, how to compute the data uh, for the I.O. ports. Uh, I will not uh, describe everything, but um, what uh, you need to remember is that uh, besides the 12-bit address, uh, there is this uh, additional part, uh, which is um, combining the different uh, pins used to select the chips and also uh, some additional bits here that differentiate between um, IO and uh, RAM or ROM uh, data. Okay, uh, now uh, we need to define uh, the internal uh, structure of the CPU. So again, if we look at the data sheet, we see here the internal uh, structure. It has an accumulator. If we zoom, we see it's a four bit uh, accumulator. It also has a program counter, which is a 12 bit because it contains an address. Uh, it also has uh, an address stack. The program counter uh, can be any one of uh, these uh, of these registers in the stack, and there is a stack pointer register which uh, selects the current uh, program counter. Uh, there is um, a series of uh, sixteen uh, registers again four bit. However, uh, at any one point, you can access only half of them. Uh, this again is handled by an index register. Uh, we also have uh, flags um, and uh, so on, and the instruction register, which maybe we don't really need to wait. So uh, in this case, uh, we have um, the program counter, the accumulator, the program counter stack, uh, stack pointer, uh, the registers, the current register bank, and the carry flag. Uh, I've used uh, long, uh, even though, uh, uh, for example, the accumulator is 4-bit, but uh, I've used this uh, because I didn't want to use uh, too many costs and it doesn't really hurt the performance. 
So everything you see here is uh, related to the internal architecture of the CPU. Uh, following this, uh, the most important uh, function is um, uh, the step function, which uh, takes care of the instruction processing. But before that, uh, let's take a look at the initialize. Uh, the CPU, when started, will go to an uh, initial state. Uh, for the 4004, everything is uh, set uh, to zero, and uh, it starts in uh, uh, ROM uh, in order to execute the instructions. Uh, however, for different CPUs, uh, this may not be the case. So again, it's important to read the data sheet and the manual uh, to understand uh, various values associated with uh, internal components of the CPU. Uh, now let's take a look at the step function. So uh, this is the function that is executed uh, for each simulation step and takes care of executing uh, instructions. Uh, as I said, uh, I'm using a single memory bus uh, for uh, everything memory related. Uh, in this case, uh, it starts by reading uh, the next instruction. It uses the program counter address uh, and uh, also this uh, mode variable, which in this case knows it's uh, from uh, the row. Uh, again, uh, according to the instruction format that we saw in the datasheet, uh, each instruction, uh, if it's one word, two word, uh, starts with this uh, form where uh, first uh, four bits uh, contain the opcode, then we have modifier, and it may be uh, an additional uh, instruction word for two word instructions. So um, uh, we start by checking, uh, uh, well, we read the instruction, we extract uh, OPR and OPA as they are named here, OPR and OPA. OPR is the first one, the opcode. We check if uh, the OPR uh, indicates uh, one of the uh, two word uh, instructions. If this is the case, we read the next word uh, and again uh, extract OPR2 and OPA2. Um, then, uh, based on this uh, OPR, which is the opcode, we start to decode it and uh, execute the instruction. Again, in order to decode each instruction, we have to look at the instruction set. Uh, we see here the hex code, or uh, we can uh, use the binary code. Uh, and uh, for each uh, one of these hex codes, uh, we need to implement what happens uh, for that particular instruction. So let's see the first one. The first one uh, is uh, hex code zero and is uh, no operation. So we have this switch uh, on the opcode. We have this case uh, zero. Uh, and uh, we also look at the second part. It should be again zero. Uh, we see uh, the instruction is clearly defined as 0, 0. Uh, and in this case it's a, a no operation and we do nothing, we just uh, break. Uh, it's possible that uh, we may have an invalid program which tries to use uh, an invalid opcode. Uh, for example, we don't have here uh, 0, 1 we only have zero, zero. So if this is the case, uh, we can throw uh, CPU invalid opcode exception and 
uh, can also log uh, the values associated with uh, the uh, instruction words. Then what happens uh, with this exception that depends on the simulation. Uh, we can either stop the simulation, we can uh, just log the exception and continue. Uh, we may ask the user if he wants to continue and so on. Okay, and uh, we repeat this process for each uh, opcode. Uh, let's take a look at uh, another simple opcode. Uh, for example, the uh, uh, increment, uh, this should be uh, yuck, okay, increment accumulator. Uh, this is hex code F2. So uh, let's see here. Uh, I've implemented the cases. Uh, incrementally so uh, we can easily scroll down to 0xf okay so 0xf uh, this is the first part so we see again f2 now the first uh, four bits are f and uh, the second are 2 so uh, we have here k0xf then we have the second switch and we look at 0x2 which is increment the accumulator so uh, we have uh, accumulator plus plus which in java increments the value but uh, we also need to check uh, if there was a carry uh, if uh, the value is uh, 16 so if the accumulator was 15 uh, plus 1 uh, this would be 16 and this can no longer be represented on uh, 4 bits so uh, we have uh, carry in this case uh, the carry flag is set to 1 and the accumulator uh, is uh, reduced to 4 bits by this <coughs> end operation in this particular case we know uh, the accumulator value will become zero, so uh, I could have just written here accumulator equals zero. But uh, this is uh, an instruction that is useful uh, every time there may be a carry to make sure the new accumulator value is reduced to four bits, since this is the uh, hardware uh, precision of the CPU. Uh, similarly, we can look at uh, other instructions, how they are implemented. Uh, let's take a look at an uh, instruction, uh, for example, write the contents of the accumulator into the previously selected RAM main memory character. This is WRM, uh, hex code A0. So this instruction is... Uh, one of the instructions that are uh, implemented also in the 4002 chip and um, we need these two chips to work together in the hardware but in this case uh, everything uh, is implemented in the simulation of the 4004 so uh, let's uh, look at this so uh, a0 Again, we found case uh, 0xe, case 0, wrm, uh, x2 uh, equal, uh, equals the accumulator, uh, x3 uh, takes care of the carry flag, and we have uh, this uh, memory write, uh, which uh, as I said, is uh, a single operation that simulates uh, what uh, was uh, done in the chips. So at this particular location, uh, we'll store the accumulator. 
so why is this enough and why we don't need uh, to also simulate the other chips? Well, because uh, we are interested uh, from the simulation point of view to read and write in the same location because uh, why we write something there? It's uh, probably because later in the program we need to read that information back. So it's very important to have an uh, address space that allows us to write and read uh, in uh, the same location. And uh, I've done this uh, with the extended address space. Uh, it's definitely not the only possibility. Uh, you can try to simulate individually each uh, chip, but uh, for the purpose of this uh, simulation, it's not uh, needed. Uh, we also have uh, uh, the possibility to execute a program and to combine uh, the CPU simulation into an uh, extended system simulation, but I will cover this uh, in uh, the next episode. So stay in touch and thank you for watching. Bye.